Good morning, I'm Philip Dawson and a warm welcome to this week's National Online Service from the Church of England for the second Sunday before Advent. I'm in the garden of the Parish Church of St Bartholomew the Great here in the City of London by kind permission of the Rector. We've come outside to enjoy this beautiful bright morning in the knowledge that the days are drawing in as the seasons change and as we journey towards the beginning of the church year, Advent, when we celebrate the true light that came into the world, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city, where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, forever.
The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. A reading from St Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at the 14th verse. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth.
The City of London will be bustling with people again tomorrow, many of them hard at work managing other people's money. We might imagine the scene in our Gospel reading being played out in one of the offices nearby. A manager calls their team in one by one to review their performance. The two who've made a return on the investments they manage are rewarded. The one who failed to make a return risks losing their job. In the first century, one talent was worth an astonishing amount of money. Burying it in the ground for a long time rather than investing it in a bank would have meant a significant loss of potential income. So the master in our gospel reading punishes the third slave, casting them out into the darkness, giving the one talent they'd been entrusted with to the slave who'd made the highest return. Reading the parable in this way, focusing on the money the slaves were given, doesn't feel quite right to me. Jesus did talk about money a lot, but I don't think he encouraged a system in which the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So another way, then, of reading the parable is to think of the talents that the slaves were given not as money, but in terms of gifts that each has received. Unique skills and abilities. Talents we're called to use in the service of God. To hide them away is an affront to his glory. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven, we're told. But reading the parable in this way doesn't seem quite right to me either. We might argue that the slave did use the talent that he had. He used it against what he saw as the harsh, exploitative behaviour of his master, of which he was so afraid. There might be times when we feel it's better not to use our gifts or talents to benefit what we see as an unjust power, as a form of protest. Where such concerns are justified, it seems inconceivable that God should condone punishment. So if it's not about money or gifts and abilities, what is it that these slaves were entrusted with? What is this parable about? Perhaps it's about faith, hope and love. What St Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians is the basis of our relationship in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. This faith, hope and love is the light that we're called to share, to multiply, to grow in the world, always. Even with those with whom we fear or disagree, even when we're taking a stand against what we see as injustice or inequality. The return on investment of that faith, hope and love, that is the business of Jesus. So, children of light, let us set aside our fear and get to work.
Let us pray to Almighty God in thanks for all he's entrusted to us in order that we might live in fullness of life. Lord, by your Spirit, unite your Church, that it might be a sign of your transforming love to all people. We pray for our bishops, priests and deacons and all who serve in your name. We give thanks for the gifts of faith, hope and love. May we use them to reveal a foretaste of the riches of your kingdom on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by your Spirit, grant us the courage not to bury our heads in the sand. Let us not be fearful of taking risks in order to challenge injustice and inequality in this life, but guide us to do so in and through your love. We pray for peace throughout the world, for an end to conflict and violence between all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by your Spirit, enliven us all to seek profit in the business of Jesus. Help us to measure our actions by the return on investment from your love for us. To see others not as objects to be exploited, but as your image bearers with gifts to share. Grant us the wisdom to discern these gifts in ourselves and others, the confidence to give them and the humility to receive them in and through our relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by your Spirit, help us to remember that we are children of light. Grant us the courage to build up one another, to encourage those who are buried in depression, suffering in darkness, to act always in your image, the giver of life to all. We pray for all who are sick and suffering this day and for all those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by your Spirit, receive with mercy those who have died. Comfort those who mourn in the knowledge that we are destined to enter into the joy of our Master. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray in confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.